Anthony Leeds Tyler here at Pikes Peak Signature Event, checking with 1064B, perfectly flawed. Well, this team's been having a fantastic season so far. Two event wins and excellence award under their belt already. you got to check out some great things about this role. We're talking about iterations, what they've gone through in those changes as well, but man, their climber is absolutely fantastic with the changes of the climb rules. This team has really taken that under their wing and had a fantastic climber in this. So we'll be doing a bottom up on this robot. Some a lot of great stuff, especially with changes to their kicker for a flyweight as well too. So let's learn more about this team coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more and apply. Christian, let's start off talking about your robot here from bottom up. Let's talk iterations. Your team's gone through so many on this, but had such a successful season. So what changes have you made from your drive and what results have you seen out of it so far? So um, from the beginning of the season, we had we knew we had we were going to have a really tanky bot, a really heavy bot. So uh, we kind of designed it to be a little slower. But as the season progressed, we saw that, you know, things needed to be faster. We needed to be able to be faster to compete with the rest of the game. We have swapped two four wheels instead of three on three and a quarter inch wheels. The th uh, 360 instead of 257 was our original. Looking at yeah, the, yeah. the robot so far, something I got to ask you, you know, watching in the field, you're just able to go over that barrier so smoothly yeah. of it. How have you uh, put into consideration like your center of gravity on your robot? Um, we worked a lot with uh, where we had our motors to make sure that everything was much lower to the ground because we've had issues in the past where that wasn't the case and we couldn't get over or we struggled to do certain things. So we worked a lot with that and really tried to make sure that that was a big priority in our designing and our building and testing and implementation of our new designs as we go on. Chase, we really got to talk about this big highlight yes. of your climber on it. So talking about, you got a PTO rolling into it. So I'd love to hear more about that. Uh, and then we got to show off this climber, talking about how you came up with the design for this. And it's been working phenomenal so far. Yeah, it's been working great all season. Uh, so when we first started designing this robot from the very beginning, we knew we wanted a climb egg just like this. We were sitting in the dome at Worlds when the game got announced and we were all talking amongst each other. Dang, we could have this super cool climb because of the, you know, so uh, from the beginning of the season, we knew that we needed a lot of power to make this climb work. And especially with how heavy we knew our robot was going to be, we had to make sure that it had a lot of power. So in this case, uh, there's a small release piston right here. This just releases our six total linear slides here. Uh, basically, the entire purpose of this is to have a small compact uh, lifting mechanism so we could fit it in an area rather than having an entire robot be taken up by that area, that climax. So uh, how this works is we have a small PTO system right here. This is just a gear powered by a piston, powered and pushed back and forth with a piston. Um, this shifts uh, directly onto the motor stacks on each side. So when it's engaged, this can only spin one way. You can't turn or anything because both power, both uh, sets of motors power this axle all the way through the robot. So uh, for example, when we start to drive forward, this axle gets turned by the entire set of motors sure. so uh, we call this right here our winch and pto axle so this axle right here is our pto axle with our ratchet on it because obviously when the match ends no power is applied to motors so we have to have a way to keep our uh, axles in one place otherwise we'll just fall down the pole so we have a ratchet here to make sure the climb stays up and we have our winch axle right here this winch axle spins at 225 rpm and it's done great uh, especially with the six or the six two spur gears to get some more grip on the paracord right here so when it winds up it pulls the entire climb mech down and it's worked great for us ever since talking about like packaging of this robot going the linear slide system was that really the reason for that was just the, from a packaging standpoint because we've talked to other robots that or other teams we've seen robots are doing like more of like a cantilever arm or something like that as well by going this route did it allow you to not have to make so many changes on the rest of your robot? Most definitely. So when we were doing this, we knew, like I said, we knew we, we wanted it to be a small compact. Sure. So uh, it also kind of helped us when we switched over to our, our uh, lift mechanism. We, we could use the linear slides as a mount for the lift. It definitely has lots of versatility when it comes to 
uh, having everything work the way we wanted it to. Like I said, we've had this all season. We've been working with it all season. So. Uh, let's go over to Brian. He's going to talk more about uh, the uh, transition over to a kicker mech. You were running flywheel earlier. You've gone to that kicker. Talk to me more about uh, the results, especially in skills. Yeah. So at the very beginning of the season, we had a uh, sorry, we had a really small catapult. Um, the catapult was free spinning on an axle. Okay. Uh, powered entirely by pistons because we thought rubber bands. I mean, they wear out. It was a neat design, um, and we showed one of our teams, our P team the uh, design and they're still using it now if you want some footage of that but um, then we switched over to a flywheel uh, again it was on the same robot so we had to change to add a little lift in there to just kick it up enough for me and Christian to stay loading it quickly without it getting in the way and it helped with some of the blockers early on um, once we started noticing that our skill scores just weren't great and uh, matches I mean they started slowing down a little bit. Uh, tri balls shooting wasn't really the goal. So we just uh, switched over to this kicker and um, we put it on a lift. This one's a little bit taller than the other one. It goes up and um, initially we just had it 100 RPM direct. Um, it was fast enough for most match play, but we just weren't getting there for skills. Um, so. We switched uh, 66 RPM on a double slip gear, so it's uh, a, a 133 shots per minute, a little bit faster. And just recently, we added a distance sensor so we can uh, keep loading it quicker, full voltage, and that just helps us load even faster for skills. Uh, we can load in about 28 seconds most of the time. So I think it's been a pretty successful little uh, journey we went on. From a shot angle perspective, having the lift as well, like do you in skills not shoot with the lift and keep it down or like what's kind of the process for that? So when we put the lift up, the consistency tends to drop a little bit. Sure. So this mainly for just getting over if we were to have an opponent who had a blocker and we absolutely needed to shoot. Um, most of the time we don't really use it and sometimes we end up using it as a blocker every once in a while just since it sits a little bit taller and blocks some of the tri balls that go through. Um, but no, we keep it down for skills because that just helps with the consistency, the accuracy. It's not bouncing around as much. And um, yeah. That yeah, totally makes sense of that. Start to wrap on this route. Talk about the wings that you're uh, implementing on that. Ashley's going to cover more about that. So Ashley, talk to me about uh, you know, the results you've been seeing out of it. When were these added on your robot as well too? And just how it's been working out so far. I think the wings have worked really well. I think one of the hard things about the wings is I feel like they've changed so much. We've gone for about three different designs of our wings throughout the season. We started with the C's channel wings like you have on our bloopers, and then we moved to plexiglass. The plexiglass allows us to be more flexible against some of the corner goals and things like that, to hug around them to get more tri balls into the goal effectively. Um, we recently changed it to kind of the double uh, point on the wings there. Give us more uh, touch on the tri ball basically. Gives us more control at different places of the wings. Um, and it's just the plexiglass allows us to be more flexible and it allows us to get some of the balls out of the corner as well of the corner goals. Did you have to make some uh, like testing with these standoffs that you have here, try to get either like the right dampening or the right angle or anything like that? Or did you just kind of go with that right away and it worked out? It, it worked pretty well when we tried it. We um, kind of had an eyeball of kind of how long we wanted the corners to go. So when we tested it out, we kept one straight, we kept the corner on one, kind of figured out if we like it or not. And then we ended up switching it over um, about last week, I think is when we made this change as well, so. Well, perfect plot. Thank you so much for taking time. Tell us about your team robot. I mean, this climber is absolutely phenomenal, but you got a great machine all together period as well, too. So we can't wait to see your performance here at Pikes Peak. Wish you best of luck all the way through. And thanks for taking time. Tell us about your team. We appreciate it. Thank you guys it. so much. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. 
Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more and apply. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.